It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Going to give it 110%. Can I win it? Yeah. This is one tough competition. I'm very ambitious and I'm very passionate, and I've come here to win MasterChef. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. In this one-hour episode, these six contestants will all compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against three other exceptional heat winners. Our quarter-finalist is Julian, Cheryl, Angela. But first, it's the quick elimination test. Here we have six brand new fresh faces. Six people who want to show us they can really cook. They have one chance to showcase their talents. Mess it up, you're out. Welcome to MasterChef. We want you to make one plate of food. We're going to give you 50 minutes. At the end of this round, three of you will be going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The contestants have 50 minutes to create one dish from any of the ingredients in front of them, which include pork fillet, prunes, pears, shallots, potatoes, chocolate, savoy cabbage, and saffron. Mum of two, Karen, wants to take her love of home cooking to the next level. You're not just a mother of two, you do, you have a bit of a funny pastime. Tell us about it. Yes, I've been a DJ on and off for 20 years, and I've said on many occasions recently that I actually prefer to stay in and cook, whereas it used to be going out clubbing and rolling in at six in the morning. Ideally, my dream would be to teach people how they can make beautiful food and really spoil themselves at home. After 20 years in the RAF, Alan hopes to kickstart a new life in cooking. I'm due out of the Air Force next year. And at the time of life, it's time to branch out. And food is a passion that I've had for years and years and years. What dish are you going to cook for us, Alan, that's going to propel your new culinary right. career? Um, hopefully a creamy mash with a port loin. We've um, still got about 40-odd minutes to go, and your pork fillet is already in the oven. It's on a lower heat, so hopefully it'll just tenderise slowly. Good luck. Thank you very much. Wine merchant Max believes his passion for food and wine will take him far in the competition. My inspiration probably comes from chefs in the industry. I can see their creativeness, I can see their passion. When I see that happiness and that creativeness, it makes me inspired. What sort of palate have you got, Max? I think I'm quite good with taste. My job involves tastes. Well, what's, what's your job? Uh, I work in the wine industry, so I sell wine to restaurants and hotels. Do you eat out quite a bit? I try to. I try and eat in as many of my customers' restaurants as possible. Recent graduate Sophie wants to prove she has the drive and determination to make it as a top chef. You had problems with your pastry. I have made mistakes. I've also redone my mistakes because I want them to be to your standard, hopefully. What are you going to cook for us? A ever so subtly spiced pear tart and a bit of chocolate sauce with a little hint of chilli. I'm a quick learner. I'm very ambitious. I will learn and do whatever it takes to win this competition. Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway. You've got 25 minutes left. Liverpudlian James loves British classics and wants to swap his sales career for one in food. I've had a, an ambition for the past five, six years now to open my own deli and um, selling all, all international meats and um, unusual things that you don't find in supermarkets nowadays and also have a little type of bistro ca stroke cafe. James, you've got a big smile on your face, you seem very confident and moving around the kitchen like a professional. Got things under control, I think, at the moment. How far can you go in this competition? I believe with 
progressing further, I'll pick up more tips and I'll hopefully go quite quite far. Devon Farmer's wife Kate enjoys cooking rustic food with a Mediterranean twist. Paella is my forte. I do the best paella in Devon. <laughs> what sort of cook are you, Kate? I cook a lot, but whether I'm a sort of good refined cook, I don't know. What sort of food is it that you do? A lot of one pot stuff because I cook two hungry farmers. You cook for two farmers? Yeah, my son and my husband. Five minutes! You should be thinking about getting it on the plate. Step away from your bench. Time is up. That's it. RAF man Alan is pinning his hopes of a career change on pork loin on pear puree with cider sauce and creamy mash. It's sweet, first of all, and nicely sweet from that pear. Your pork is slightly over and it's slightly chewy. The potatoes have become waterlogged. What you have done is cook lots of different dishes and then put them onto a plate. And it becomes the stage where your mouth is confused about what you're eating. Wine merchant Max wants to show he has a good palate by serving up a dish of Moroccan-style pork and couscous with spring onion. Yeah, a little bit of spice from the harissa. Um, the couscous goes well with it. The issue for me right now is I don't feel it's got enough flavour in it. I like what you are attempting. I think you either cook quite a bit or you are lucky enough to eat out quite a bit. Ambitious Sophie has served an experimental pear tart with caramelised almonds and a chocolate and chilli sauce. I actually quite like your little tart. The pears are tasty, the almonds are crunchy, the chocolate on top, I'm trying to work out where the spice comes in. But I think you used saffron because you thought it was chilli. You should know the difference between a piece of saffron and a bit of chilli. It's almost very lovely. I have to work out how much of that is by design and how much of that is fortuitous. Is part-time DJ Karen's pork stuffed with pear, almonds and prunes good enough to get her through to the next round? Your pork is nicely cooked. I like the seasoning on the potatoes. I like the crunch of the cabbage. There's far too much cream and you are left with that sticky cream feeling throughout. Sweet pear, crunchy almonds and prunes. Lovely new dessert. Stuffed inside a piece of pork with garlic? <clears throat> Not for me. Salesman James has gone for a classic combination of stuffed pork with prunes and sage on a bed of cabbage and bacon. Your pork is still quite soft and a bit, it's, it's quite moist. Mm. Um, not bad. Good flavours. Until you get to that sauce. The cream's so reduced, it's gone a bit claggy. Yeah. Farmer's wife Kate has made a dish of parsley and garlic stuffed pork with cabbage and mash. Quite heavy handed with the garlic. Are oh, there whole lumps of garlic in the stuffing? Is that what it is? You need to cook that garlic first. There is huge amounts of garlic in that stuffing, but if you just close your mind to that, actually it's a good dish. I'm very pleased because we have a room full of decent cooks. This isn't going to be easy. We'll get you back in as soon as we've made a decision. Thank you, and off you go. I enjoyed most of the food in the room today. There was one plate of food I really didn't enjoy at all, and that was Alan's. There was asparagus, there was a cream sauce, there was a bad mashed potato, watery, with fried onions on the top for some reason. I like Alan as a guy, but this MasterChef, I think Alan should go home. If I was going to knock another one out now, 
it would probably be Karen. What Karen actually cooked today was not good at all. Almonds, pears and prunes stuffed inside a piece of pork, it just wasn't good. Do you think that she would win MasterChef? No. Then she goes home. She's gone. I quite like what Max is up to. His piece of pork, just cut into slices, the sauce with, with the harissa to give it a bit of spice. Very good idea. I'm willing to bet he's doing good food in the next round. Max is in. I'm really, really confused about Sophie. Making a case for her, she made pastry. It went wrong. She made it again. And the almonds were good, the pears were lovely. When she put the saffron in there, she tasted, she liked, so she put more in. I know that I made an accident with the saffron, however, I think I actually pulled it off really well. Do we give Sophie a chance? I'm absolutely convinced that that girl would walk barefoot over hot coals in order to progress through MasterChef, and that means a lot. Max and Sophie in, Alan and Karen out. Let's talk about James. Mm. Some of the flavours were really good. The idea of the sage and the prunes together inside the pork, and then the cabbage underneath of the bacon, nice idea. It's that cream that goes with it. It was just a little bit very unusual. But we both like the guy. Let's question mark him. I would love to go through to the next round, because going on to that professional kitchen is just like a dream. Well, I've got to say that Kate's dish looked the best. I think the composition and the idea it was very, very good. I think Kate does cook. There were huge lumps of garlic. Well, Kate or James? Well done, guys. Tough round. You've done your job. We've done our bit. Three of you are staying. Three of you are going home. Alan, sorry, sir, you are leaving us. Karen, you are leaving us as well. Sorry. Max, we'd like to see you cook some more. Max? Well done. Thank you. Sophie, you're staying with us, Sophie. Kate or James? Sorry, Kate. Congratulations, James. Very well done. Tough round. Well done. I've got through the first daunting round, and that's what I aim to do, really. And, uh, yeah, really, really happy. I'm feeling over the moon. Ecstatic. I can't believe I made it through to the next day. I'm so, so happy. <laughs> We have three very strong contestants, and they are looking forward to going to a professional kitchen. We get to see, do they really want to change their lives? Can our three cope in the world of a professional kitchen? Let's find out. It's day two, and the contestants are on their way to Zilly Fish, a popular seafood restaurant in the heart of London's Soho. Pasquale, James, I am the chef. The three contestants will be working under the watchful eye of head chef Pasquale Amico. My expectation from you is to have a good service, good food, no mistake. But there's plenty to be done before service starts. We do everything from scratch, cooking the crab, cooking the crayfish. We do fresh food here, we don't buy stuff already made. With two hours until service, Max starts the prep for his main course stuffed fillets of mackerel served with spring greens and roasted tomatoes. And I want the fillet like this, yeah? No any mistake. Like this, yeah? You got 20 of them, okay? Okay. Max, however, doesn't find filleting the fish quite so easy. <sighs> Hardest, disgusting thing I've ever had to do. Salesman James is in charge of a starter of courgette flour tempura stuffed with crab, and it's a tricky dish to get right. Sophie has to hand make each individual parcel for her dish of fresh crayfish ravioli, and the chef has very high standards. Okay, yeah, make sure then when you finish them, they're always nice, uh, yep. nice and uh, closed. So yep. when you cook them, there is no pasta, no fast Nothing's coming out. Come out yep. Yeah. It's twelve o'clock. Service begins, but Max is nowhere near ready. Use this. This is not what I want, you know? I've kind of destroyed that piece. Yeah, no, you destroyed most of them, not only one. Been here for uh, one hour and a half mm -hmm. doing 10 fish. 
Marcia, one oyster, followed by one courgette flour. As the orders flood in, salesman James's starter proves very popular. Four zucchini flour. But his presentation isn't up to scratch. Right, this, look at this lettuce, look. You can't sell lettuce like this. Do again, then. I don't want this lettuce. Meanwhile, Sophie's first attempt at cooking the crayfish for her ravioli isn't going to plan. The oil was not hot enough. Okay. Yeah, so take, do again. Yeah, take them out again. Do again. After messing up the filleting, Max is now struggling with the cooking of his mackerel dish. How long for the mackerel? Five minutes, chef. Yeah, five minutes would be too long, you know? You reckon that's OK? In the dining room, a VIP has arrived. Aldo Zilli, the restaurant owner, is in for lunch and has ordered James's crab starter, followed by Sophie's crayfish ravioli. OK, I need two gorgette flour straight away, please. It's going absolutely brilliant. I'm loving it. OK. Can you score the service? Service! The tempura courgettes with crab were... The crab was extremely lovely and fresh. It was well executed. With Aldo giving James's dish the thumbs up, the pressure is really on Sophie to get this right. Service! With his restaurant's reputation on the line, Aldo expects the best. I was a bit disappointed. There was not enough filling and the pasta was really hard on the outside. I wouldn't recommend that to my customers. How long for the mackerel? 30 seconds, chef. As service comes to a close, Max is finally producing plates up to Pasquale's high standards. I mean, you can't expect to get past anything past, chef. Um, it's just you've just got to get on with it, grin and bear it, and try and do your best. And Sophie's ravioli is tasting much better. Good. Very good. It's been a tough few hours. How does head chef Pasquale think the contestants have coped? At the beginning, Max didn't do very well with the preparation of the fish. Filetini was a bit too slow. During the service, when, uh, when we give him a bit of pressure, you know, he dropped the oil a few times on the plate. You know, it was a bit struggling. This experience in the kitchen has um, it's given me more hunger, actually. The vibrance, the energy, um, the, the adrenaline really kicks in. It's actually a real buzz. Oh, James, I think, uh, he, he done quite well. Of course, he done a few mistakes at the beginning, but, you know, after two checks, he was, he was uh, very, very, very confident. I was very impressed with him, I think. It seemed to come naturally, to be honest. I just rarely got stuck into what I needed to do. And it was fantastic. Sophie, she was very busy because she had to do the, she had to prepare the fish, she had to prepare the ravioli. Think about it, in two hours, she's done uh, quite well. I'm so competitive; it's in my nature. It's my most unattractive quality, and I wanted to be the best today, and I don't feel like I have, so I feel quite disheartened. I think if I had to employ one of them three, it would be James. Now they're straight back to Master Chef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Welcome back. You have to cook for us now your own food, your own two courses, and we expect great things. One hour, impress us, and you'll go through. Off you go. Wine merchant Max sailed through the first round, but struggled in the professional kitchen. Will his two experimental dishes get him back on track? What are you cooking for us, Max? Uh, I'm going to be doing a Canadian scallop dish, which is going to be mixing it with a, the classic Canadian maple syrup bacon. Uh, but within the maple syrup, I'm going to be adding a bit of spice, so I'm going to try and take the spice, sweet and salt together. You talk about food and flavours and tastes the same way you talk about flavours and tastes of wine. Um, yeah, I get it, I get I, it. I get excited about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so. I get it. Very unusual food from Max. You've got scallops and bacon, absolutely right, and then you've got a sort of North American breakfast coming in here with maple syrup as well. Max, we know, has got a good palate. He understands flavour. That's great. He's talked the talk, now he's got to deliver. Liver Pudley and James came out top in the pro kitchen and now aims to secure victory, cooking two classic British dishes. For starter, I'm going to do smoked haddock and potato salad. 
and for me, seared venison and open wild potatoes. The idea of being a cook is not new to you, is it? When I left school, I was looking at wanting to go into the, the chefing industry, but I was a bit put off the hours and the commitment that was needed. But after today's performance in the kitchen, I, th I really enjoyed it. I like James's menu. Will he pull it off in the time he's got? Great dopamine wise? Ah, I'm not quite sure. You've got 15 minutes left. Sophie's ambition and determination have made a big impression so far. Will her adventurous two courses be good enough to win her a place in the quarter final? Stuffed mushrooms for starter. It's got soft cheese, it's got coconut. That's unusual, coconut and it cheese. It is unusual. And I'm going to make you roast guinea fowl with fennel puree and baby vegetables with red wine jus. Can I ask, Sophie, how old are you? 22. Just gone 22. It's quite young. I know, it's very young. <laughs> I'm incredibly ambitious and I'm learning a lot. And even in the last couple of months, I've been reading every single food recipe I can get my hands on to try and learn as much as possible. I have no idea what's going on. Mushroom and coconut and cheese. She's obviously eaten it before, but I've got to say right now, I wouldn't order it. Coconut? Never before in my life. You have one minute. That's it. All done. Stand away from your bench. Experimental Max is serving a starter of scallops, bacon and spicy maple syrup with pistachios. It's followed by balsamic glazed lamb with minted pea puree and a wine and prune sauce. I think that looks fantastic. It's highly original. It looks very, very professional. Well done. Thank you. I really do like the maple syrup against the bacon and scallop. That, my friend, is an absolute taste revelation. Thank you. Very well cooked, very well made, very well thought out. Very good dish. There's a very well made red wine sauce there. Very strong, very fruity, very powerful. It's a very, very well made minted pea puree there. That lamb is lost in between those two big flavours. OK. I really like the concept. I just don't like the flavour. I think you can probably do a little bit better because you've proved that in your first course. The starter was a bit of a wild card and yes, it's so pleasing to get that real positive feedback from Greg about the tastes and the combinations. Salesman James has made a starter of smoked haddock and new potato salad with lemon mayonnaise and a caper sauce, followed by venison with braised red cabbage and dauphinoise potatoes. There's some really wonderful, clean, classic, crisp flavours and combinations on that plate. Smokiness of the haddock, coming up a bit tangy at the end with the capers, nice little bit of lemon going through and the creaminess of the mayonnaise. Yeah, you would polish the lot off. I think it's a really lovely dish until I get stung by this very, very salty, massive parmesan cheese that sits atop those potatoes. That cheese is too much. It fills up all round the bottom of your mouth. There's so much about your food I admire. Yeah, it's falling just short of great each time. I do regret, in a way, putting the parmesan cheese on top, but I'm used to the parmesan cheese and I quite like it. So everyone has their own taste, really, don't we? Sophie's resting her hopes of a quarter-final place on an experimental dish of mushrooms stuffed with coconut and cheese, followed by guinea fowl served with potato rosti, baby vegetables and a red wine jus. The flavour of the bacon, the mushroom, the cheese, the thyme, a little bit of basil, I like. The texture of the cream cheese in there I find a bit heavy because the mushroom itself is very meaty. I can't taste any coconut. What I do get is that sticky, 
cream cheese with the sharp, salty, tangy Parmesan cheese as a very strong finish. I, I think I would struggle to eat it all. Okay. The guinea fowl and the rosti with that mustard in there is really, really lovely. But I do question the combination of fresh garlic and thyme, mustard and potato, and then the sticky red wine sauce. Red wine sauce is gone in an instant. It's not even a footnote. Also, the fennel, that's gone in a split second. But what you are left with is the beautiful flavour of that very, very well-cooked guinea fowl. I have put up quite a good fight with John and Greg, and I am really passionate about food, and I do really want to go through to the next stage. Well done, you three. Step outside, and when we've made our decision, we'll call you back in. Thank you very much. Great food out there. Really, really good food. I think we have two talented boys, and I think we have a young lady who's not at the same level. Sophie did a mushroom stuffed with cheese and coconut. The best I can say about that is I couldn't taste the coconut. She's a good amateur cook, but she's not ready for MasterChef finals. No way. And I think right now we should actually knock Sophie out and we should talk about Max and James. Max is an experimental cook and Max has got to have a good palate because of his day job. So in my mind, great first course, there's the promise. Main course, not so good, but with a bit of work, a bit of thought, Max could do very, very well indeed. Max's scallop dish, I just fell in love with. I thought the combination of smoky bacon, maple syrup, lightly spiced, and that scallop was just unbelievable. I would have loved the scallop dish followed by something with just a little bit more elegance rather than trying to be so showy. Hopefully I've shown something that's original and creative. I like the honesty and the guts of uh, James's cooking. Yes, the starter was a little bit twee. When you ate it, which food is all about, foremost, it's flavours and textures. They were great. It delivered on every level. James and his venison dish, he let the venison speak for itself. Uh, I like the dauphinoise and the texture of it. The cheese on top, unfortunately, just overtook that whole dish. I reckon the judges have got some mixed comments about me, but I think I've done quite well today. James, with a couple of tiny tweaks, has lovely, enjoyable food and good building blocks to make a great cook. Max, we've got a guy who is really interesting, who makes one course which is absolutely magic and one course which just needs a little bit of work. We have to make a decision. We've got one quarterfinal place. Who's it going to be? Our quarter finalist. It's James. Congratulations. Amazing, thank you. I'm um, just over the moon. Disappointed, but really, really happy for James. Uh, generally, I thought he put the two best dishes across and he obviously deserved to win. I had a great experience. I've got the rest of my life now to carry on experimenting with food and carry on trying out new things, which is really fun and I'm still really passionate about food. I don't think that's going to go away at all. Hiya. Uh, yeah, guess what? What? I made it through. Oh my God. <laughs> I got through, yeah. Knowing what I know now, I'll just build on it and build on it and I think I've got a good chance. I'm going to give it a bloody good go. James's place is secure for now, but in the morning, he'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's 8 a.m. on quarter-final day, and these four heat winners have returned to fight for a coveted place in the semi-finals. This is when it really starts to hoss up. From 24, we now have four great, great cooks. Quarterfinal days are simply fantastic. You make it into the semi-final, you can almost reach out and touch the prize. I want this a lot. I'm going to put everything into it. It's a massive deal for me. I'm hoping it's going to be a very good springboard for what I want to do in the future. 
I wouldn't be sat here, right, if I didn't want to win MasterChef. It's not a chance I want to mess up. I want to do the absolute best I can do. Three guys today will end up disappointed. For one of these cooks, it will be the start of the most wonderful journey. During her heat, 22-year-old office temp Angela demonstrated a flair for experimental food combinations with a chocolate wasabi sponge. The whole thing is delightful. It is a very good tasting dish. But she failed to deliver on presentation. It just looks like it's been made by a three-year-old. <laughs> Oh, they're really nice. Angela is very young. She's like a sponge. She wants to soak up knowledge. She is very, very keen to learn. Experimental she is, inspired she is, but her presentation is the issue. You can just be so creative in the kitchen and it's just a way of expressing yourself and just showing a bit of you. Is there a difference in flavour between the large and the small ones? Toy manufacturer Julian impressed the judges with his love of French cooking and ability to make the perfect sauce. It's rich, it's deep in flavour, it's well seasoned, it's a very, very good sauce. You know how to make sauces, my friend. Julian, now that guy is a real, real cook. He loves the food of France, classic French cuisine. Superb. Today he has a chance to prove to us that he can do more than just a sauce. But he has to prove that today to make it as a semi-finalist. I really believe if you're going to do something, throw yourself into it wholeheartedly, do it to the best of your ability and give it 100%. Liverpudlian salesman James wowed the judges with his great British classic two-course meal. There's some really wonderful, clean, crisp flavours and combinations on that plate. Yeah, you would polish the lot off. Which one do you recommend? I think about James and I smile. His food is big, it's very, very big flavours, but it's not the most attractive of places. Oh, that's big ones. <laughs> what I do love about James is his confidence. The James that talks has to go on the plate. Can I win it? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, it's 43-year-old Cheryl, who dreams of her own patisserie, in her heat, she blew John and Greg away with a chocolate and ginger honeycomb pudding. I am quite uh, taken aback. It just flies away inside your mouth. You don't ever lose that love, because that is just beautiful. Oh, I need a piece of fillet steak. Yeah. Cheryl is very, very difficult to ignore. That lady absolutely shines. If that girl today cooks savoury dishes like that dessert, she can win this competition, I'm convinced. I believe this is the chance for me to change my life and to prove I can deliver the best possible food I can deliver. We have the queen of puddings, we have the king of sauces, we have the queen of invention and we have the king of bravado. This is fantastic. It's 10 o'clock, and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. This is the ingredients test, and we know that great cookery is built on great ingredients. And you can't cook great food unless you can identify great produce. I've got smoked fish. And I've got some very obvious ones, but I've got some which I think are a little bit tricky. I have got five pastas on my tray, that wonderfully inventive food stuff from Italy. Let's start. These tubes are penne. Penne means pen or quill, and it is shaped like a quill. Hello, Cheryl. Hello. What is that? Penne. Is it penne? Penne, pasta. That's penne. Julian's off to a good start. Now he must prove to John and Greg that his heart is truly set on winning. The pressure and the pace of the competition has escalated and I seem to be thriving on it more and more as it goes on. I'm married to a French woman. For us, food is about happiness and well-being. You know, if I've got 50 pounds to spare at the weekend, am I gonna buy a pair of jeans or am I gonna buy a four rib uh, roast of beef. I know exactly what I'm spending my money on. I've got such a fire in my belly about this competition, which I admit 
wasn't there the first day I walked in. Uh, but it's now started to take me over. The next one I think is quite tricky. This is smoked cod's row. What's incredible is that that thing is full of eggs, thousands and thousands of eggs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a guess and say smoked monkfish, but I think I'm wrong. Sorry, I can't. I'm not sure what that is actually. It's a smoked row, cod's row, I think. Angela is the only contestant to recognise the cod's row. She now needs to assure John and Greg that she has the commitment to make it through MasterChef. I really, really want this. I've got through to the quarterfinals. I just want to go further. I've just got to get over this little hurdle now and just I just want to cook this afternoon. I just want a job that I'll enjoy for the rest of my life and the only thing I enjoy is cooking. I love experimenting with flavours and foods. I might not be the finished article just yet, but I want to show you how much I've learnt in the short space of time that I've paid attention to what you've said. And I just, I just really want to cook. That's all I want to do. Thanks, Angela. I have fusilli. Now, that's obviously recognisable by the twirly shape. I think that's fusilli. Can't think of the name. It's on the end of my tongue. Um, oh, I can never pronounce it. Is it fuccini? Uh, Fester. Oh, God. Fusilli. Cheryl has correctly identified most of the ingredients, but she must now persuade the judges that she's ready to pursue her dream of running a patisserie. I'm a passionate person anyway. It's not something that I've rehearsed. It really is from the heart. I've wanted to be in the food industry for a very long time, but I've always put it on hold to do other things. I believe that now the time has come to actually realise that dream and take it all the way. I want to be able to create wonderful things. I want to be able to take different flavours, combinations, bring them together, and make them taste beautiful. And hopefully I can do that. Thanks very much, Cheryl. This dark, large piece of smoked fish is smoked tuna. Now, I think this one's a tricky one, because it's not seen that often. That is a tuna, smoked tuna. Smoked tuna. I think it's smoked tuna. Sorry, I'm not too sure. James has struggled in this test, so for him, the next stage is crucial. He needs to do everything he can to convince John and Greg that he's worthy of a semi-final place. I think it's all got to come naturally. If I write something down on the paper, I'm bound to forget it as soon as I get in there. With every new challenge, I feel as I'm, I'm growing um, as being a chef, learning new things, learning about new ingredients, and every day it just makes me want it more and more and more. And I believe if I go any further in this competition, it's going to change the way I work, it's going to change who I work with. Hopefully it's going to set up a brand new future for me and my future family. Problem. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Cheers, guys. This is a tough decision because right now we have to work out who stays and who goes. Can I just start with Julian? What is good about Julian, he's been honest. He said he didn't have the bug when he first walked in here and you can see the emotion in him changing. That guy really wants to do this and we know he can cook. I really should stay in. Yeah, I'm like you, I really like the guy. I'll tell you who else, I think Cheryl is just such an exceptional cook and she scored the highest on the ingredients recognition and she sat there and ticked all the boxes of stuff I wanted to hear. I think that lady is a proper, proper find. I agree with you, I think Cheryl is a very, very good cook. OK then, we've got Cheryl through and we've got Julian through. Let's talk about Angela, let's talk about James. I'm deeply concerned about James because his recognition of ingredients, John, was appalling. Angela did much, much better in the ingredients recognition and Angela had a lot more to say with a lot more heart on that sofa than James did. Angela is definitely the most inexperienced cook we have in the room. Her passion is there, that's for sure. Is her inexperience, though, going to be her downfall? James is a good cook. His food was clean. That venison, that cabbage, the dauphinoise. Bring him back in here, he will cook us good food, I am sure. John, they're all good cooks. We have to decide between one of these two, James and Angela. We know that you four are great cooks, but the rules are 
that only three of you will cook for us today. One of you is leaving us. James, it's you, unfortunately. You are leaving us, so I'm sorry. I'm feeling devastated, gutted. To get this far and to go to this stage, it's just a killer, really. But I'm definitely going to try and progress and build on my experience here and hopefully make it change my life without MasterChef. You are three very good cooks. Only the best of food will make you a semi-finalist. OK, guys. Let's cook. The three remaining contestants now face their most advanced challenge yet. They have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. So far in this competition, Angela hasn't been afraid to take risks with her experimental approach to food. Angela, you've got uh, an extraordinary varied group of ingredients upon your bench. Does that mean this experimental cooking of yours is going to continue? They're not crazy experimental, they're just little touches, something a little different. My first course is carpaccio of venison with a watercress salad and raspberry vinaigrette. My second course is salmon with a sticky glaze, uh, stir-fried vegetables and miso potatoes. And then for my pudding, I'm doing a lemon and basil tart with a strawberry balsamic cream. I think that's my crazy, crazy element. You are a very young uh, yes. quarter-finalist. Does that mean you haven't got the knowledge of the other contestants? Um, I don't know, because I think I've been cooking since I was, you know, since I could walk and talk, really. I've always been in the kitchen. And I just, I'd love to do it as a living. Why? Because I'm fed up of being a temp. I'm just temping at the moment. I haven't really got any sort of direct career path. I spent ages at university following what everyone wants me to do, and now I want to do something that I want to do, which is cooking. So this is for you? Yes, this is for me. I'm really interested in this lemon mousse type tart with basil. For some reason, I trust her mixture of flavour. I think that's really, really intelligent. For her three course menu, dessert loving Cheryl has taken inspiration from a variety of different cultures. The starter is. Um... Thai. It's green curry with mango, so the Caribbean influence and, and tiger prawns. And the main course is um, fillet of beef on a roshti and with a red wine shoe. And for pudding, white chocolate stack with a dark chocolate mousse and macerated raspberries, which have been uh, marinated in kish. So we're going from Thailand, mm -hmm. we're going to Britain. Yes. And then from Britain, we're going to that dream patisserie of yours? Well, that's just to open something really, really fabulous where I can sort of make wonderful cakes and pastries and biscuits. And it's a really fabulous chocolate creations that taste heavenly and make you want to die. I have had somebody, I'm not sure if I like to say this, but I have somebody tell me that my chocolate cake's better than sex, but hey. Cheryl, get your head down. Keep one eye on your food and one eye on your watch, please. Absolutely. I have already sampled the delights of a cherry dessert, and quite frankly, my heart is skipping a beat at the prospects of another one. But will the other two dishes match that dessert is still my question. Half an hour left, that's all. French cook Julian has set himself a huge task with a technically demanding three-course menu. Julian, I hate to disturb a man at his custard, <laughs> but what, what are you preparing for us today? We've got a, a light tempura fish, a mixture of cod and prawns. Are you ditching your all French style? No, no. Uh, main course, we've got a stuffed ballotine of chicken. It's going to have a port and mushroom sauce with it and dauphinoise potatoes. And pudding? Custard tart with a few prunes in it, Greg. Have you timed this at home? I have. Run slightly over, but I haven't got a a seven-year-old and a 14-month-old around my ankles, a couple of dogs demanding a walk, a telephone that doesn't stop ringing, so I'm hoping that I might just crack it with the grace of God and a fair wind behind me. <laughs> I have set myself 
uh, a tall target as far as timing goes. So if you're going to run out of time on something, what's it going to be? Tempura. Do you think you could win it? If you let me get on, boys, I'll have a bloody good go. <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong with Julian's menu, and I didn't expect there would be. Oh, yes, sir. If it works, it's going to be very, very good indeed. His issue is timing. Three minutes. One minute. It's finishing touches now. It's one minute. Twenty seconds. Ladies and gentlemen. Step away from your bench. All you three played it tight. For her starter, Cheryl has cooked tiger prawns with green curry sauce and mango puree. Your sauce is beautifully flavoured. I like the sweetness of the mango that goes with it. It all works for me really, really well. I want much, much more from that sauce. If it's going to be that minimalist, it's got to really... Pack a punch. Cool, yeah, it's got to pack a punch. Will Cheryl unite the judges with her second savoury dish? Fillet steak with beetroot rosti and turnips with a red wine jus. You didn't have enough time to make your sauce, did no, you? No, I didn't. Don't do it justice. The only flavour I'm getting off that is the flavour of that beef, because it's so rare, almost raw. The only other flavour I get is the turnips. It's, for me, it's not a dish that's giving me much at all. Nice taste of sweet beetroot. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of sort of caramelisation, which is slightly bitter, which is actually OK. Mm -hmm. And that meat's very rare. You, you attempted too much here. I know, but, you know, you've got to raise your game. You can't just sort of keep it level. Has Cheryl left it too late, or will her white chocolate tower with chocolate mousse and raspberries be the clincher? It's magical. The white chocolate melts away in your mouth, you get the flavour of the raspberries, and then you think, no, I'm supposed to be tasting raspberry, but I'm tasting cherry, and the alcohol comes in the back of it. It's just beautiful. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Problem is, my expectation... ..is so high. I think of you as an absolute dessert princess. And I was expecting something spectacular. Can I ask you an honest question? Mm -hmm. Has the fact that you've messed up your timings today... Mm. ..robbed you of a place as a semi-finalist? I hope that, you know, the pudding and the starter are enough to get through. You know, I can deliver some fabulous food. Hopefully you'll take that into consideration when you are judging. Angela's first course is carpaccio of venison with watercress salad and a raspberry vinaigrette. I do like the look of this dish. Uh, you did this because it was um, relatively simple yep. to free up time for the more complex stuff. Yep. I understand that perfectly. The lovely sweet is that vinaigrette coating that, uh, that carpaccio that's been well seasoned. I mean, nice. It's a big gamble, and your gamble's paid off. It's a really good dish, but it's also a very, very clever dish for competition. Intelligent cooking. Delicious cooking. Will Angela now up the ante with her Asian glazed salmon, stir-fried vegetables and miso potatoes? It, it's giving you exactly what it looks like it's going to give you. Sweetness of salmon, and then we crunch on through sympathetically cooked vegetables. I think you've cooked everything very well. I think it's an unremarkable dish. Your salmon's cooked beautifully, really beautifully, and it has got a sticky, lovely, sweet glaze on the outside of it. Your vegetables are crunchy, so there's a little bit of flavour coming from, from those uh, potatoes, the miso, but the punch is what's missing. Yeah. Because it is about getting to a semi-final, and we're trying to find that wow factor. Can Angela now show she has what it takes with her lemon and basil tart served with strawberry and balsamic cream?
<laughs> I get a beautifully fresh, refreshing lemon tart. And on the top, I get this absolutely remarkable, rich, deep balsamic flavour that ends up in strawberry. It's a flavour sensation I've never experienced. It shows either the cooking brain of a dessert genius or a loony scientist. <laughs> Do you mind if I go back in again to see, just with the tart, see if I get the basil? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I like it. Because every single component part is made very, very well. How, honestly, do you think you've done today? I know I've still got a little way to go. I'm not the finished product yet, but I think I'm a good way there. Julian had planned a starter of prawn and cod tempura with mayonnaise. Well, the, the, the first course uh, is a disaster because uh, you haven't got tempura batter on your uh, so-called tempura. No. Well, there's a bit there, look. Nice sweet prawn flavour and a sort of mustardy feel mayonnaise. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a prawn with a bit of a sauce. You said that if anything was going to fall, it was going to be the prawn tempura. I think if you're going to go through a competition like MasterChef, you can't think that anything should be able to fall. Will Julian's ballotine of chicken with a mushroom and port sauce and dauphinoise potatoes make up for his starter? Creamy, smooth, buttery potatoes. That chicken with the stuffing inside. I like it. It's a real shame about that sauce. Because it needs to be further reduced, it needs to be sticky to hang around. The sweetness of pork comes in and it just goes again. Your flavours are defined. I really, really like it. The chicken's still moist, lovely filling inside with the bacon, the sausage meat in there. Beautiful potatoes, I love them. You showed a huge amount of skill, Julian, today. Can Julian's prune and armagnac tart tip the balance in his favour? That is a lovely looking thing. That's a well made tart. Nice flavour, it's soft, deep with prunes, I like it. Nice pastry. That's great. It's got lovely concentrated plum flavour. The almonds that are in there in the tart, love the flavours of it. What is great about it is that is a French classic. That's what you love to cook. But I do wonder today whether you have sacrificed a semi-final place by trying to do far too much. Life's all about challenging yourself. It's no good uh, taking the easy road. You've done your bit. Greg and I now have to do our bit. Big decision time for John and I. Off you go. We have to find one semi-finalist from these three very, very talented people. Cheryl had to be able to match up the beauty, the wonderment of her puddings with her savoury dishes. Cheryl had a green Thai curry with prawns and uh, mango pulp. I got no real big flavour in that green sauce. I love that prawn dish. I like the subtle flavours that came with that coriander and the spring onion and that green sauce that sat underneath it. But uh, the main course was a disaster. We had no sauce, we had raw beef. Wasn't right at all. Dessert was well flavoured. I loved her puddings. I liked the cherry and the raspberry and the booze and the chocolate. And her desserts aren't overly sweet, and that's why I really like them. They know I can cook, they know I can put flavours together. But it's, is that enough to get me through? I don't know. So let's think about Angela and let's think about Julian. Angela was the only one who managed to serve up three complete, coherent plates of food. A carpaccio of venison, watercress salad, wonderful flavours, great textures. We then had a piece of salmon on stir-fried vegetables with potatoes around the outside. Vegetables were well cooked, salmon was well cooked. But Greg, you did say that you thought Angela's salmon was unexciting, unremarkable, were your words? Yes, but it was also faultless. There was not a single mistake on it. 
I was absolutely knocked out by Angela's dessert. It played little tricks on my palate. It made me giggle. It made me smile. There's not someone who's just inventing for the sake of it, like a mad professor. That is someone who has very, very clever ideas about food and a very strong and natural palate. That girl is going to be a star. The pressure right now is intense. I just hope I've done enough to get through to the semi-finals and just show that I can work even harder. Julian today, by his standards, had a very, very disappointing round because his tempura of prawn and cod didn't work at all. There was no cod. There was hardly any tempura batter on the prawn. Let's just not dismiss Julian just yet. Think about the skill that went into that chicken ballantine. He took a chicken, he boned it out, he made a stuffing, he stuffed it, he rolled it, he put it in muslin which had been oiled, he made a tart filling, he soaked prunes. He did a huge amount of work. Julian is a skilled cook and has more skill than Angela has and will have for a very, very long time. Angela has hit this round with a clear strategy and that's about getting those three plates up. What Julian has done is come in here a completely cavalier attitude and just wanted to show off as much as he could and has collapsed. No way, he tried to demonstrate technical skill. That's exactly what he did do. They know I can cook, you know, and I know I can cook, but I need to be, I need to temper my ambitions to the time limits that I was given. Um, and it's a harsh lesson learnt if I'm walking home tonight. We're looking for a semi-finalist here, John. Which of these guys has the potential to go all the way? This is really tough, because we know that all three of you are great cooks. We only have one place. The winner of our quarterfinal It's Angela. Congratulations. Well done, well done. Oh my god, I can't believe that <laughs> I really do want to pursue the dream. I know I can open a patisserie, I can do all these wonderful things. I just need to make that come together and make that dream a reality. Gutted, absolutely gutted. It'll take a while to get over the disappointment. But, uh, I'll take this on the chin, get up, and carry on with it. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's just insane. I've got no one's ever said anything this good about my cooking. Today, she did do it. Angela raised her game in line with what was expected for a semi final place. There wasn't a single mistake from starter through main and into pudding. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I thought I was leaving on the first day. I didn't think I would get through to the second day, and to get through to the semi-finals now is just phenomenal. Angela will return for the semi-finals, but next time, six new contestants will battle it out for the title of MasterChef.